All right, welcome to the Robert Show. I'm super excited to host uh, one of my uh, favorites, Pavel, uh, who's a partner at Kebula. Uh, very exciting news coming from uh, Kebula. They recently raised 32 million uh, Series A funding. Uh, so I'm here to discuss various things with uh, Pavel. Obviously, not only just about the expansion strategies, but uh, also a little about the product impact, innovation in data operations, also how are they looking at uh, business AI initiatives and uh, we'll also be talking a little about the future vision and goals. So without any further ado, I think it's time to bring on Pavel up here. Hey Pavel, welcome to the Ravid Show. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Yes, uh, thanks for having me, Ravid. Yeah, this is uh, right. This is the first time we're doing this together. We didn't get to see each other in, in Big Data London. Sorry about that. But hey, everybody, it's great to be here. Thanks for the congratulations. My name is Pavel. I'm one of the co founders and the CEO of Kibua. This is actually my third venture in the in the in the uh, internet cloud. Uh, one of them was uh, the first one was Portal Network, largest one in Europe. We sold it to Warwick and Pinku. Second one was we did the largest performance media agency servicing 15,000 clients and all of that with data and ML way before the cloud. And then I was thinking kind of like what's next? And all of my businesses were around data, machine learning. So I met my co-founders, Peter and Milan. They had the same vision. They had a you know an agency which was helping clients to go to cloud. We you know put it together and we said, hey, let's build company that will actually help people to democratize the access to data and that will actually not be one feature, one tool, but will help to change companies. And that's how we started Kabula. All right. These are fantastic insights, Pavel. Thanks for sharing this and uh, definitely your journey has been an inspiration. Uh, quick one in terms of, uh, you know, the expansion strategies. I know with the recent 32 million Series A funding, what are Kabula specific uh, strategies for expansion uh, into the European, UK and US markets in the upcoming years. Do you want to share a little about that as well? That, that's, a, that's actually a great question. We, uh, we already have one third of our revenue coming from US as a as we speak. Mm -hmm. And we originally started yep. in Europe, as you know. And uh, what we are doing now, we are actually expanding. We started last couple of years we really started to focus on the more enterprise up uh, market a uh, uh, segment of the market where people really need governed things they need to you know like have everything together and so we see big demand from large corporations especially in in, in usa in um, in uk and north northern european markets we already have our customers there as i said in us we it's one third of our revenue we work for companies like Burger King Group, or we work for DXC, which is one of the largest uh, largest software of IT companies. And the same is with Britain and, and um, uh, European Northern countries. So that's where our expansion goes to. Okay, these are uh, great insights, Pavel. I think uh, definitely, uh, you know, you all have captured a huge market, not only just in US, in Europe and UK or in your home ground, but uh, also uh, talking about that, uh, it brings me to an important question around, you know, the client feedback and around the product impact. So you mentioned positive feedback from clients in their ability to gain full control over their data and processes. Can you share a specific client story that illustrates this impact? So it would be great for our audience to learn more about it. Yeah, totally. That's the part we love to talk most about, right? We love our users and, and you know, like yeah. what they can actually achieve. So, you know, I like have to understand we serve a very specific persona. From the beginning, we said, hey, we are not going to be serving like deep, deep technologies because there are always tools for them. But well, we saw a need to right. serve people who are technical enough, but are in the business departments, you know, and that cannot be dependent on IT, you know, but IT needs to control it, mm -hmm. it needs to be covered. So we uh, started to focus on persona, which Gartner nowadays calls business technologists, people who are technical enough, but sit in the line of business. DBT might call it analytical engineer plus or something, right? So like people who can do some tech, 
but are not really uh, like real, really deep deep so that's we those people they value three things they value user experience specifically that they have everything in one place and they can use different tools but under one roof that it's kind of like it increases their productivity massively and that you know like the whole customer first approach with support with the community and always be there with partners for them so like being specific about some use cases uh, it's like uh, for example we have a huge publishing house in europe euromedia which actually uses Kibula everywhere. And over the first year, they saw 12% sales boost. So it's pretty good, mm -hmm. you know, like for using just data, they didn't change anything else. We have a large uh, European uh, sports, you know, like dealer, which, which is, which is yeah. in six countries. And they did, they did using Kibula a lot of, lot of uh, data in, in their departments across many countries. And they saw 5% lift in sales just by optimizing the routes, you know, optimizing that. But it would be impossible to do it before because they have so many systems in every every single kind of like country. Or when we talk about one of the largest banks, you know, like they are using us in 37 departments for hundreds of users with zero platform operations. So there is mm -hmm. no one running the platforms, right? They're just using it. So 100% of time, goes to producing the value. They also create dozens of data products and share them across all of those 37 departments. So it's really composability, not in theory, but in practice. But I think one of the best examples we actually love is uh, Rohli Group, which is the grocery delivery uh, network in the four countries in Europe, including Germany, where they just recently became profitable, you know, like margin uh, contribution profitable. And they actually use Kibula to automate all of their business processes. They use it, you know, to do a lot of AI. They use it to actually everybody in the business has their Kibula account. They can actually work and look at the data and work with the data. And this is really company like at its best when you see data driven company because they utilize the power of all the long tail use cases. It's not hard mm -hmm. to do big use cases, right? Like if you put enough money, enough people, you can do CRM data use case. But like if you think about it, in every department, there is a couple of small use cases that everybody has. But there is so many of them across the company that if you can serve all of them, the amount of you know uplift you generate is bigger than from top five larger use cases. So that's kind of like really yeah. exciting. Thanks for sharing those uh, interesting uh, client feedback and, uh, you know, uh, the product impact that it plays. It is always important for the community to learn more about, you know, how Kibula is actually making that impact and how is it actually solving the problems for the customers. But that also brings me to another important question uh, here about uh, how does Kibula's approach to data stack as a service innovate or differ from traditional data operation methods. Would you like to share a little about that uh, as well, Pavel? Yeah. Well, uh, I, I, you know, like it's all about kind of like data management at, you know, is the big category, right? And then there are some things like data ops and others, but data ops is for us, you know, like uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a discipline how to work, right? Not, not the technological kind of like, like stack, right? Um, uh, traditionally, you need to have data ops, kind of like the, the two cycles, and, and one is kind of like innovative, second one is Six Sigma and, and like real operations. But if you want to move forward and if you want to really do data meshy things, right? The problem was that uh, uh, traditionally people were focusing on technical people with highly technical skills. And then those technical people would have mm -hmm. DevOps people that would kind of like translate it to business people and then so you have like different worlds trying to work together uh, and trying to bring it together like like with the you know like if you remember the old um, switchboards you know for telephone like from the movies you would call someone there would be a lady kind of like taking taking the you know like the wires putting in the right things and then it would connect we don't have that anymore right we changed the architecture of the switchboard now it's fully automated um, that's what we do with, you know, like the whole kind of like data space, like the data stack as a service. 
We believe it's all about architecture. We treat the whole landscape as a single system, right? And that's why we developed something we call Kebula, Kebula Data Operating System. It's a it's an API layer which sits on top of you know like any tool, not depending if it's in AWS or GCP. And its whole purpose is to make it easy to use, build, and then reuse what people have built in other departments with basic technological skills, but huge context skills. It's kind of like with your computer, right? Yeah. You have Linux, you can do if you are very deep tech, right? But like I love Linux, like for 15 years, I haven't done it. I'm using Mac because it's easy. It abstracts me and I can just share it with anybody and very easily, right? But, and then uh, I don't know if you are here of it. Yeah, see you. But yeah, you know, I'm here, sorry. <laughs> I didn't see that. But like, so our big idea is like, we should treat the whole cloud or all, you know, like infrastructure as one big computer that kind of like we give you access to in governed way, right? Like, so everything you do, all the, you know, like data workloads you do are governed end to end. Like all the data journey is governed. So that works very well for large enterprises because it can be connected to your active directory. And then people can just get an access. It's audited automatically and you know what to do and you just come and, and actually start building. So yeah, that's kind of like the use case in the bank. I was you know saying 37 departments. Yep. They build data products on top of Kebula. Now we actually have yep. data. Now, now we have a, a, a data apps with Streamlit and AI embedded in them. People build them, one click, reuse them. And that's the whole thing you know make it easy this is perfect right uh, uh definitely it uh, helps uh the community at a different level and uh Kabula is doing all the right things uh to make sure that uh you all are at the forefront of innovation uh so thanks for that uh Pavel. uh we have a question here from youtube that i would uh, love to uh pick and the question says let me pull that up for you as ai and machine learning continue to advance how does kabula plan to integrate these emerging technologies um uh, into into its platform to further enhance its capabilities for business ai initiatives can you tell us a little more about it uh, well uh we think about AI into two, two different uh, two different streams. The first one mm -hmm. is how can we use AI to actually make the life of our users easier, right? And that's kind of like, uh, yes, we've done a lot of things and we have a lot of MVPs and we'll be launching a lot of things in production in next in next months. And but those are things mm -hmm. like automated, you know, assistant for SQL queries to build them across the whole, you know, data stack. Which is hard because, like, like GPT analyzer is kind of like easy, but you put one file there. But if you want to do it across your entire estate, you need to understand where the data comes from, what is the data, what is the metadata, which pipelines is being used, and so we've taken us almost a year. We've been really, really early on there, and now we have a very, very working, very working version which we are happy with, and we want to put it as an assistant to people. So. It doesn't magically spit out the answer, but it guides them and goes. So it's kind of like what for people. There are more things, you know, like for our users, like data pipelines, AI, helping you to construct just conversationally pipelines. Or, you know, because we are all in one kind of like the layer, we have all the metadata. So we are now going to be launching Impact AI, which actually helps you with the real-time AI-created governance layer across all the workloads using and data. It's pretty cool because yeah. like all these people are asking like, hey, where does this being created? Who did it? And people don't document. So we are solving that now. But that's for our users. Uh, the, the bigger question is, what does AI bring to our customers, right? Um, in that, we have a big emphasis you know, on AI industrialization. We see it really, and now everybody, I think, is, is on board as, as the fourth industrial revolution. And we think about it that, you know, like in the first couple of months, the steam engine was powering the the workloads, you know, the processes in, in, in business. Then it was electricity. But now the AI is in, should be embedded in every, every process. 
and help it to scale and automate. And that's what we are actually helping companies. And we are so excited to see not only, you know, like new companies, technology advanced like Rohley Group, but some of the traditional companies, like we have a company called P3, which is the largest mm -hmm. builder of logistics parks, you know, like the parks around the freeway where people like Amazon put the warehouses. And they have embraced, you know, like last year data. And 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 when 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 we start with LLMs, they they embrace LLMs like so heavily. They now use it for onboarding, yeah. for everything. And we provide it for them, and we process the data and, and prepare it all every every time, right? But er, literally every client is thinking about two things. First, how to use LLM as a as the interface to business, and that's where you need to have data connected. You know, really provide it on every day. And second, how to use wider machine learning activities to actually automate the processes. And that we have, if you look at, at our website for the case studies with Rohley Group, it's just unbelievable what you can do with that, with just a couple of people and no ops people. But the thing is, LLMs in the enterprise environment are only as good as your data is good, as it's connected, as people understand it, and as you have access to it. So that, that's really exciting time for us. We've been waiting for this for a couple of years. These are super interesting insights, uh, Pavel, because I was at the AWS reInvent and uh, I was talking to a lot of leaders there. They, they mentioned to me in the same way where it was more about, you know, the practicality, I would say, about uh, how practical AI is right now. And, they are also looking for real-time applications uh, from AI. So uh, we are definitely in that interesting times. Uh, but that also brings me to another important question. I know 2024 is just around the corner. And uh, I'm kind of excited to learn a little about uh, the future vision and goals. Just looking beyond the current expansion plans, what is your long-term vision for Kibula? And, how do you see the platform evolving, say, in the next five years? Do you have any insights that you would like to share with our audience today? It's a, first, the concept we've seen a couple of years ago, we had this concept that the world is moving to algorithm driven. You know, you could see it with mm -hmm. the stock exchange. It's now all algorithmical. You could see it with RTB. And we, we kind of like foresaw that being done in the real world, in all other or other parts of the economy. So that's why we set up Kibla to actually be a backbone that helps people to actually do it. We are not inventing the LLMs, right? Uh, well, we actually help people to actually easily put it together and build and mainly rebuild. So you don't they don't have to kind of like, right. like compost, right? They don't have to build everything from scratch, which is the, like if you have to build everything every time from scratch, you cannot scale things across the whole economy. So we saw that- kind Exactly. Of, our mission, what we set out was automate every process, business process with AI, right? It's kind of like a big mission, but what it means is enable everybody to do it like you use your computer. But we have this, like, we have this, uh, you know, like we have this one number, magic number that we come, and it is like for every second that Kebula platform works, how many lifetimes of unnecessary work you know, we have helped people to actually save, right? We have automated. Because if you think about it, we are literally, we are literally, we are literally uh, compressing people time, right? Compressing human time and automating it. And, you know, like automating the cognitive processes, you know, because like, it's great to have an LLM. It's great to have, you know, some data, but you really need an operating system to put it together. So for us, uh, next couple of years, mm -hmm. it's uh, this explosion. Right, it's about exposure. What people will be doing with an operating system like ours, where you know, like you have LLMs, you have you have all the infrastructure working as one computer, no matter where it sits and who runs it, if it's in cloud or on-prem. Uh, what new right. applications will be done on top of this architecture? Because, like in the PC. Kind of like architecture, right? It was the word processor. There was it was the spreadsheets, and then other things, right? I I can't wait to see what people will build in next five years. If you think about it, it's really 
really amazing, you know, and we are very big listeners to our users. We work with our customers on a daily basis. We, as the founders, right. we still work with our clients and we are just curating, right? We are listening, curating and moving forward. So it's exciting times. These are super interesting insights, uh, Pavel, because I was at the AWS reInvent and uh, I was talking to a lot of leaders there. They, they mentioned to me in the same way where it was more about, you know, the practicality, I would say, about uh, how practical AI is right now. And they are also looking for real-time applications uh, from AI. So uh, we are definitely in that interesting times. Uh, but that also brings me to another important question. I know 2024 is just around the corner. And uh, I'm kind of excited to learn a little about uh, the future vision and goals. Just looking beyond the current expansion plans, what is your long-term vision for Kibula and how do you see the platform evolving, say, in the next five years? Do you have any insights that you would like to share with our audience today? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for mentioning our team. I believe we have the best team, you know, there is. People like Tim sure. and all, all people around them, they are it's just like phenomenal. It's like I've been in the internet business for gosh, 25 years. And I have to say that, you know, like Kibula team is the best I've ever had. I'm so proud of them. Wow. So so thanks wow. for mentioning. I'm uh, second, like if you want, you know, people want to, uh, you know, like get in touch with me. Yes, we have a lot of information on Kibula.com. We are very active on LinkedIn. I'm personally pretty active on LinkedIn. Um, Pavel uh, slash Pavel D or Pavel Dolezal, you can find me. On Twitter, uh, my hashtag, uh, my, my, sorry, my, my my Twitter handle, uh, Twitter X. Sorry, I, see see how for how long I've been on Twitter. <laughs> I still can't change, you know. But my yeah. my X is Pabu zero one P A B U zero one, and my email is Pavel at Kibula .com If you want, you know, like to get in touch, if you want to talk about data, about the fourth industrial revolution, ah, it's one of my favorite topics. I always have time for it. Robert, thanks for reaching out. This has been a real pleasure. Until next time, thank you. Have a great day. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.